Hi, good morning everybody, it's Steve. Welcome to the Little Little Wood Shop. And as part of our Sunday evening blog, we told you really quick we were going to try to run you through as quickly as possible uh, our VCarve Pro CNC router mailbox tutorial, okay. Well, let me start with the project itself, okay. I told you we went into my outdoor plans and I told you that we had found uh, this building a wooden mailbox plan right here. I have gone through and I have tweaked this just a little bit more to better suit my needs for the materials that I had on hand. As we scroll down we can see right here uh, this I had to do a little bit differently because of in fact the materials that I had. I ended up going with an 11 inch wide bottom 19 inches long and instead of putting my sides directly at the base of the bottom of the mailbox I had to sit them up on the top side of the bottom uh, because of again the materials that we were working with and we also did something a little bit differently here on this design I'll bring in uh, I'll bring in a picture for you at this moment and let you see that I ended up cutting this out in full in the machine however I ended up cutting out the lower half out I used my Craig's jig on the back side like you see in the illustrations here and we basically used two Craig's jigs with a whole lot of glue to fasten with some clamps and hold everything in until it dried and it seemed to have worked out pretty well for me alright well let me minimize this without further ado let's bring in VCarve Pro and the other thing I'm going to show you really quick is that is in fact we did nest the job now depending upon how wide how long you can go in and you can change all these we'll show you how to do that right now but for the sake of this example I've put everything in a 24 by 48 nested piece of material I would probably recommend using some kind of uh, veneer if you wanted to do these as a uh, if you wanted to in fact put them in a blank and, and run them as a nested sheet okay well let's close this out let's come to our vcarve pro and let's create a new file all right we're going to create a new file i am going to make the width on my x-axis 24 inches we're going to make the height on our y-axis 48 inches our thickness will be three quarter and my X and Y datum position, I always start in the center of my material and I always start my Z axis from the top of my material. Our units of measurement in the United States are inches. We click OK. Now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to devise a little rectangular box. Okay, you see me make these all the time. 1.5, and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to make him uh, 1.5. Please bear with me, it's a little early this morning and I certainly have not had all my coffee. Alright, let's close him out. We're going to take this box, we'll zoom in up to the top. This is going to basically give me my offset. Now yes, I can do this off of my guide over here on the side, but to be honest with you, at this, uh, this early hour, even with my glasses, I can't see those numbers. So truth be known, this is why I do it this way, okay? All right, we're going to right click and we're going to pull up a guideline. I want to pull up a horizontal guideline. I'm going to bring him right to the bottom of our 1.5 by 1.5 inch box. Highlight him and let's just move him out of the way. The first tool path that I want to create is going to be the bottom of the mailbox. Okay, I told you that I did my bottom at 11 by 9 because I used a piece of 2 by 12. We ran it through the planer. Well, we've made the whole box out of 2 by 12 but we ran it through the planer uh, to get it down to the thickness that we wanted. So my first, first bottom will be 19 wide, and my height is going to be 7, uh, I'm sorry, my height will be 11.0 inches. This will be the bottom of our mailbox. We're going to click Apply. I can see that it's hanging on this guideline nicely. Zoom out a little. I'm going to come down to transform objects. I'm going to align my, my piece off the center of that Y axis. 
Great, that is now done. Let's close this out. And let's roll him up a little. I'm going to bring this 1.5 inch square back in. Oh my goodness. All right, he is in. I'm going to come back up here to create vectors. We're going to create another rectangle, and this time we're going to do both of our sides. Now, I told you our sides are 19 inches, but my height is only 7. I had a piece of 2 by 8. By the time I ripped each side down to get that little radius off, I ended up with a 7-inch side. So that's what we're going to run with. We're going to click Apply. Let's close him. Let's zoom in on him. All right, I'm going to bring him right up in. Let him touch the bottom of that 1.5. We'll come back to transform objects, align selected objects. There we go. We're going to take him now, left click him so you see all the nodes, and then right click, copy, right click, paste. Let's come down. Let's drag him out of the way again. I'm going to take this 1.5. I'm going to pull him down. With him in place, I'm going to highlight my other one. I'm going to pull him up. He looks pretty good. Let's come over to Transform Objects, Align, and let's align on that Y axis again. Great. So right now, basically, we have our bottom and our two sides. Let's do our front and our backs. And the way we're going to do those uh, in my situation, I can pull the picture back up again, and I will. I ended up measuring my distance because I ended up setting my sides up on top of my bottom. My space in between was 8.75. So let's do that. We're going to take and we're going to create our gable lens right now. All right, on to the gables. Well, let's take a quick look at the image here. I know that my sides are 7 inches, so that I know my 45 is going to start on my gable, my little gable lens here, <laughs> if you want to call them that. I know that that 45 at its low point is going to start 7 inches up from the bottom of my mailbox. And I know that with the deduction, uh, of my sides, I know that I needed eight and three quarters in width. All right, let me close this out. So let's come in here and let's look at our width first. We're going to build one, and what we're going to do is we're going to go for a width. We're going to go 8.75, and for our bottom, we're going to come up and we're going to go 7.0 inches. That is the sides. Okay, great. Let's click apply. Now we're going to take and we're going to build our roof. Now, the easiest way I have found to do this, let's highlight our, uh, our piece here. Put him down in the corner out of the way for a second. Come up to your create vectors and we're going to draw an actual square. All right, the maximum width of our box we know is 8.75 inches. <coughs> Excuse me. Hit tab. Uh, 8. 7.5, and now we're going to click Apply. All right, let's close this out. Let's come down to Edit Objects, Node Editing. We're going to come in here, we're going to right click, and we're going to delete one of our points, and this is the start of our roof. Now I'm going to come into Edit Objects, Selection Mode. Now let's, let's zoom in here. Highlight him again so that you see all of your nodes lit up. Hold down the shift key. When holding down the shift key, highlight this one corner node and hold down your left mouse button. And when you do, each time you pull him down, he will rotate an exact uh, degree setting. So if you pull him three times, he has moved exactly 90 degrees. So what we're going to do is we're going to now bring our roof in. I'm going to transform objects. I'm going to align him to the dead center on the y axis. 
I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom piece. I'm going to align him dead center on the bottom axis. Let's close him out. Let's bring him up. All right. Again, align selected objects. I just want to get everything as close as possible. Now, I'm going to come into Edit Objects, and I'm going to go into my Node Editing. I'm going to highlight my roof. Now, I'm going to right-click. I'm going to delete this span. Now, we're looking at the roof, and we're going, yes, Steve. We did take, and we built an 8 and 3 quarter by 8 and 3 quarter box. However, when we rotated him on his axis to get him 90 degrees, the width is now greater than that of the allowance of the box below it. So, what is half of 8.75? Let's come into Transform Objects, Set Selected Object Size. If you're going to do a job or any birdhouse or any project like this where you're going to use like a 45 degree pitch roof uh, on your, your project, we now know that we can come in here and we can change the width. Because we've rotated him, we're going to gain him uh, more width than we started with. So we want to move him back to 8.75. We don't want him any wider than what he's meant to be. We'll click apply there. And then as far as our height, what is half of 875? It is all right, and half of uh, 8.75 is 4.375 right here. We would click apply. Let's close that out. Uh, and then the, the last thing that we'll do here is we will just pull our top in. Let's zoom in on him, highlight him. Let's pull him up, like so. Again, we'll highlight them both. Oh, no, we'll highlight them one at a time. Come to Align Selected Objects. Get him centered on the Y axis. Same thing with our little roof. We'll get him centered on our Y axis. We'll close him. We're going to hold down the Shift key. Light up the sidewall. We're going to come over to Edit Objects. Join Open Vectors. And there we have it. When we highlight him, we've got exactly what we need. Now is I'm going to basically highlight him. I'm going to move him over. And then I'll right click. I'm going to copy. I'm going to right click. I'm going to paste. And then I'm going to drag him over here. And that's pretty much it. Uh, we're going to get rid of our, uh, our little 1.5 by 1.5 square box. Let's get rid of him. And we can now right click and delete our guideline. We'll come in, we'll open up our tool pass panel. This is going to be really simple, folks. This is one bit, one function. We're going to come in, we want to do a cutout, highlight everything. We're going to do an end mill. You want to go on the outside. If you don't go to the outside, <coughs> excuse me, what is ultimately going to happen there is you will uh, taking and cutting some of your overall dimensions out. Uh, if you would set this to cut directly on, you'll end up losing half of the width of your end mill. So if you're cutting out with a quarter inch end mill, you'd lose an eighth of an inch here on the line and an eighth of an inch here, therefore rendering your 19 inch down to 18 and three quarter. Now if you cut on the inside, now you're going to lose a full quarter of an inch on each side or a half inch all the way around. So set him to outside. We're going to cut him conventionally. I don't know... Uh, and you do not need your advanced tool pass function on. Let's come in and you can edit out your feeds and speeds. I don't know. Router, spindle, your table size, okay. You're going to need to set your feeds and speeds according to your piece of equipment. Let's come in down. We're going to need to click on the add tabs to the tool path. Let's edit. Uh, I think 10 tabs per each one of these will be good. I'm a little, uh, I'm a little anal on certain things. I don't like any tabs directly on corners. I just don't. So I'll take and I will move these and I'll reposition these where I want them. Again, it's just me. It's not It's not how the uh, the software is laying it out. I'm just a little fussy. But I would lay them out keeping them all completely off my corners. Something like that. Uh, for the sake of the example and to keep the time down. We'll close it out and we'll call this 
Cut out. Alright. Uh, yes. We're going to go through an extra 15 thousandths. Let's preview all the tool paths. And we'll put those in black. And there we can see it. Now as far as the roofing material is concerned, I would just measure and do that on a table saw or do it with a skill saw. I don't know as though I'd, I'd bother with all that. Now, some of you are going to go, Steve, I really wouldn't even bother nesting it. Maybe my machine is not big enough. Okay, I'll show you exactly how I did mine then real quick. Let's close this out. I have no interest in saving my changes. Let's come in and let's open up a brand new copy of eCarve Pro. I'm going to create a new file. Now, we're going to say that I cut all this out with my chop saw, which is exactly what I did. Now, my width, instead of being uh, the overall width of the material, will be the exact piece uh, pieces that I'm going to put the engraving in. So my sides were 19.0. My heights on those were 7.0 inches. My material for my project was actually 1.125 inches. Again, I always start off the top of my material for my z-axis. Datum is the center. And my unit of measurement here is inches. Now, I told you I ended up just putting my box number on. So let's, uh, let's do that. We'll go 1, 2, 3 is my street number. And I believe I went with a 3.5 inch font height. I will click apply. We're going to close this. We'll come down to transform objects, align selected objects, and we're going to drop him dead center on Y and X axis. Okay, let's close him out. Now, I also told you that we put some puppy dog prints in. Let me go grab those real quick. All right, with our dog paw brought in, let's check the height of that. I know my font is 3.5 inches in height. Uh, I think my dog paw, we're going to keep him at 2.5. We're going to click apply. Uh, let's try 2 and 3 quarter. I don't remember exactly what I did. But for the sake of the example, this will work. All right, so we're going to come in here. We're going to bring our little dog paw in. All right, I'm going to right click and I'm going to copy. I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste. Now, we'll eyeball them. If I were to be doing this, I would get an exact measurement off my center line for my client so that the center of this node, where I'm at right now, to the center of my X and Y, my measurement would be exact. But for the sake of the example, this will work. Let's open up our tool pass. Now I told you real quick, I'm gonna show you the difference between a two and a 2.5. We can go into V-Carve and engraving. Depending on how big these were, you could use uh, a flat area clearance tool, like a quarter inch end mill, depending upon the size of your font. I'm not gonna bother. I'm gonna strictly use a 60 degree V-bit again you will need to edit your feeds and speeds to your equipment because maybe you've got that big industrial spindle. Well, I'm happy. I'm actually even a little envious because you can drive that a lot faster than I can my router, but I may have a larger router than you, so you have to slow your feed and speed down on your particular piece of equipment, okay? So let's highlight all this up, and we'll just click, uh, we'll just click Calculate. All right, let's put our, our color, let's give it a little color. Um, and there we have it. There is your two-dimensional. We are just milling directly into the wood. Now, let's say you want to make this a 2.5 and you want to make it pop and you want to make it stand off the physical uh, sign or the side of the mailbox, okay? We're going to come in here and what I did for mine, and you can do this with a square, an elliptical, whatever you choose. Okay, it's your sign. I'm going to start with an elliptical. I'll come into transform objects and I'm going to center him. Now from here I'm going to make my adjustments. So let's close him out. Let's come down to transform objects and I'm going to set selected object size but I want my link X and Y shut off. Okay, I'm going to make this 
one five point zero inches because if I have my link X and Y on it's going to automatically compensate I don't want to do that I want a full control we're going to try six point zero inches on the overall height let's click apply all right I can take my height and do it a little bit better I think five point five let's try that however I don't want to be getting the corners of the dog prints too close to anything that doesn't look too too bad so let's come in here now and as soon <laughs> excuse me as soon as we take and we highlight an outer border around something what this tells CAD is to stay within this elliptical or maybe you choose to do this square with with radius corners that that's entirely up to you this is your mailbox but as soon as you put something around the numbers the paw prints or the engraving you're now forcing CAD and you're commanding CAD under this tool function to go in and eat all the material out and around these objects your numbers and your in my case my little dog prints here so let's click calculate we're gonna reset the preview and let's bring it back in now we can see in this case it went in it hogged everything out nicely however what I would do in this particular tool function here let me get it back again and let's go over to new the one thing that I would do is I would click on my use flat area clearance tool I would assign a quarter inch end mill again you need to adjust your feeds and your speeds to your equipment and we would calculate it this way that way there the first tool that's going to go in as you see here is the pocket it shows the end mill it shows your square end mill right here that will go in it's gonna hog out the bulk and it's gonna save your milling time if you only do this with a V bit uh, it's going to probably take two to five times longer depending upon the intricacy of the engraving itself alright so let's reset our preview we're gonna preview the tool pass hog out and clean up let's set all there we have it your two or your 2.5 simple as just putting something around it and lighting it up when you light up what you want engraved in the center of it it will give you a 2.5 dimensional engraving all right everyone well as always I hope this helped I hope this video didn't tie you up too long and you know happy milling uh, the other thing that I will tell you really quick as well we ended up including in your package I told you this will be clustered in the one thing you can do in this example is if you wanted to make this modular and these are here strictly for uh, for display and for reference so you guys know what's what because it clearly tells you right here do not mill all right you could come in here if you wanted to convert this into a birdhouse and you could as simple as I don't know what what size a hole is, is necessary for what species of bird but you could literally come in and you could put your hole where it needs to be you're gonna look at the species of bird out there and you could put in say your one or one and a quarter one and a half inch hole and if you wanted to you could put a small little quarter inch hole right below that one and that could be like a little roosting uh, peg for the little bird to come and land on so that he's got a place to roost before he flies into his hole. All right? And build it the same way as you would. Except the only difference would be is uh, I don't think that you'd have a 19 inch uh, long birdhouse. You'd probably cut the, cut the dimension in half. But that's basically how I would do it. All right? Again, everyone, I hope that this helped. I hope that you all got a little something out of it. If ever you have questions. I didn't explain myself clear enough. You know all you have to do is just shoot us an email. I will get back to you as promptly as I can and answer any questions. If you're really confused, I'd be more than glad to even sit down and work with you one-on-one -on -one with something, all right? All right, everybody. I hope you have a great week. Be safe. Get home safely to you and yours. Hopefully, we have a nicer weekend coming up. But in light of our Florida storm, we may not. So. Who knows what, uh, what we're going to have for uh, next weekend's blog, but stay tuned. We've got more to come. Again, as always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your support. 
and subscribing. And uh, we got more. Uh, we've got more to come. All right, everyone. Take care. Have a great week. Bye bye.